Hey, Bart Miller here with Cycling Strong. So you guys have all know Dave by now if you've been watching any of my videos. If you haven't, go back, watch all the videos that we've done. So Dave's with Plan 7 Coaching and absolutely an amazing coach. Um, we've talked a lot about the reason to have a coach and what he's done for me. Um, Leadville last year was total proof that you know we got a whole better time, we had a better outcome. I mean, everything went smoother for us. We got great results this year. Um, most of you know that I made it back into Leadville again, so we're back on that same journey. Got lots of fun things going along. So um, today, the reason I'm meeting with Dave and we wanted to talk a little bit about is shoes. So we got some new CD shoes. This is their 2015 shoe this year, and I'm really, really excited to ride this shoe this year. Um, I was talking to Dave, I think it was last year, a little bit about shoe fit. I've got a really narrow foot, a few things. He recommended yep. this shoe, a couple of others, but um, so we decided to, that we'd go with this. So long story short is I've been in um, this S-Works shoe and um, been riding it. You can tell this is a little bit beat up. Dave did the fit with this shoe and my big question for him is, okay, now ready to switch shoes, what do we do and how do we go about that and how do we get started? Sure. Because when I normally did it, I just kind of centered the cleat and I was done when I first came to visit you. And Dave went through and did a lot of really cool stuff inside the shoe, outside the shoe, which he'll get into, but it was a little bit of a process. So I was just interested yeah, of, yeah, of how, to, how to transition from that. Now, obviously, as you can look at these two shoes, you can see this is a narrower last. I mean, it, it's just... I mean, it's pretty obvious to me. Yeah, the way, you know, each manufacturer, they have their preference on what they're trying to accomplish with shoes, right. what they feel like their customer is going to look for. And, you know, the Specialized Shoe has been heavily influenced by their body geometry line. Uh -huh. So they have their fitting process right. and their fitting philosophy. And so a lot of that comes into, built into the shoe. Right. Um, where they have, uh, they have four foot Varus accounted for built into the shoe. So that's something that you're not going to find in a CD shoe. Uh, and, and so we're going to have to kind of look at your foot again right. and think about why we did things on this shoe and figure out what we need to do on this shoe. And, and you can't really just go, oh, yeah, yeah the cleats <laughs> look about the same yeah. because we, we have fixed drillings and we've already got the cleats put onto the shoe. Right. But there are, there, there are three, there are three hole drill mm -hmm. and they don't move. Right. And so depending on where CD decides to put their three holes versus where Specialized put their three holes on the shoe, fore and right. aft, right. And, and as well as laterally, right. can have a big influence on, on like, jumping on the bike with this shoe and then jumping on the bike with this shoe. And so what we need to do is, is take some landmarks on your old shoe. Right. So we're going to find the center point and all, all cleats have the center point of the cleat marked. Right. And so we, we can take a, a landmark reference point. So we'll, we'll make a little tick mark here on the shoe. Mm -hmm. You'll put it on. I'm going to find where the ball of the foot is in relationship to the center of the cleat, mm. then we can come over to, the, to this shoe, put a tick mark on this shoe, and then find where the ball of the foot is, yeah, and then thing. start manipulating. I like that. And it's possible that we could end up with a similar cleat position. Right. Yeah. Now, if you told me that, like you were having some issues with right. this shoe, then we're going to Look do a little bit more fine tuning. Right. But we're going to have to anyway, because as I mentioned, on the specialized shoe, and if you've ever seen the Specialized shoe on the sole, they've built in four foot Varus mm -hmm. to help support the natural Varus that we have when our feet are relaxed. Right. But yet when we, wanna, when we want to apply power and push down on the pedal, there's a gap there. Right. And so we've got to account for that somehow. And with the CD shoe, they don't build that into the shoe. So we're really going to have to figure out what level of four foot support you need in this new shoe. Cool. So the one, the, another big difference that we've got between these two setups mm -hmm. is on Bart's S-Works shoes, he has the gray look cleat, mm -hmm. which uh, gives you four and a half degrees of float. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we didn't talk about this, and Bart grabbed some new cleats, and he grabbed the red cleat, which is nine degrees of float. Um, that may or may not even be noticeable to you. Uh, someone whose foot moves around a lot, mm -hmm. maybe the four and a half degree cleat helps stop them mm -hmm. at the edge of the at the edge of the spring tension in the pedal. Right. Where that person on a red cleat, they may feel like they're kind of skating around more. Right. But if we set up your lateral cleat position correctly, yeah. more than likely, you're not going to get a lot of movement. And right. if we're supporting the forefoot correctly. Right. So that'll be something that we can look at as we, as we figure out placement of the cleat, and then we get you on the bike and see if knee alignment's correct. Uh, but that is a big consideration. Uh, you want to know what kind of float your position requires. Some people... Not uh, if it matches the shoe, but it would Yeah, not like, necessarily matching. Yeah. I well, mean, I mean, it, it looks I pretty mean. cool. <laughs> it looks good. Yeah, that's what I thought. You know, it kind of matched up. Cool. <laughs> but um, that, that's a big consideration because yeah. different pedal systems have different types of float. Right. Some of them have built in where there's a little bit of friction provided so that it's not like a skating rink feel. Right. Um, with speed play uh, pedals, for example, with the Zero series, you have adjustable float. And so if you have it wide open, it's 15 degrees of float. Mm. And you can narrow it, heel in, heel out, or both together. Uh, and some people need minimal float, right. just because you know knee stability. Uh, some people need a lot. Some people need hardly any. Gotcha. So it's very, very dependent on the individual. Uh, so what we're going to do now is have you throw on the specialized shoes okay. so that we can find our landmark. And I'm going to have you just come stand right here facing this way, facing that way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center point of the ball of your foot. Mm -hmm. And step this foot out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to make that tick mark there as a reference point for the center of the ball of the foot. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now you probably can't see as Dave is doing this, but you can see how narrow my foot is in his concern in this shoe. Not that it's a bad shoe, just the width, but you'll see the... And the specialized shoe is not a high volume shoe itself. Right. And so the fact that I can kind right. of manipulate the shoe a lot when right. your foot's in there and you right. have it cranked down, yeah. that's, a, that's a sign to kind of look for something that may have a little bit tighter fit. Right. And as you mentioned, CD is kind of a go-to shoe for right. a, just a snug, snug fit. So pop those shoes off okay. and let me have them back. All right. And then I'll make that reference point uh, of the center of the cleat. And so from our, our road fit last year, uh, this is what we found to be the most comfortable, the place where you felt like you were getting even pressure across right. your forefoot. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is a great place to start. Again, when we put these new shoes on, right. they may feel 100% different. Yeah. And that's going to be where we do the fine tuning. You may put them on and they might feel perfect right. without any additional manipulation, but that's something to, to really expect. Now these right. came with, and I didn't know what to do with them, these little tiny little screw, and it's underneath this. Yeah, so, so I uh, were, I mean, we're some of the shoe companies provide uh, a way, like with the look cleat in particular, there's a little piece inside the cleat that it makes it a bit easier when you're putting on a new cleat to do the exact same position. Oh. Uh, I, I've, I've used it and I've not used it. Oh, yeah. uh, one of the, if you're just going new cleat on same shoe, one of the easiest ways to trace do it, it is get a, get a Sharpie, yeah. trace it, and, right. and put it back on to match your tracing. Right. Uh, that's, that's really one of the easiest ways to make it happen. Okay. So, I'm going to make the 
I'm gonna have you put these guys on okay. and we'll mark ball of the foot for these. And so you've got some different, different features on the CD shoes. Uh, you've got the cuff that comes over the top of the foot. Right and you notice, um, why don't you come right here and I can point this out. Okay. Uh, this is a, a cool feature of CD shoes. Um, the, this cuff that comes over the top really puts a lot of good support on the foot, locks it into the shoe. Um, and if you notice, you kind of ended up uh, bottoming out mm -hmm. how much you could tighten it. Well, there's the, this cool little buckle system that when it doesn't have tension, we can push this in to center this cuff on the foot. And that awesome. way it won't be putting funky pressure right here. And under a hard effort, you might feel this part of the, of the strap coming over. Right. But when we center it, then you've got this broad distribution of pressure pushing cool. down on the top of the foot. So we'll, we'll mess around with that. But right now, and so now, like just overall, it feels like we've got a little bit snug, more snug of a fit. For sure. So we're gonna find that ball of the foot again. Yeah, and the way that your foot fits in the shoe is, is much different. And that feels like about the center, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Now pop those guys off. Okay. And we now we can find that matchup point at least to have a, a relatively similar starting point um, of position over, over the pedal. Right. So one of the other things I'm going to just start out with is we optimized the lateral stance mm -hmm. and you felt best with a wide stance okay and so I'm going to set set the new cleat up fore and aft mm -hmm. with our with our process of matching up ball of the foot and then I'm also going to set you up wide and then we'll look at you on the bike and see how your knee alignment looks and then we can fine-tune from there awesome so while he was doing that, I actually just played around with the cleat a little bit, brought this down a couple, like Dave said. So, I mean, it might not be exactly where we want it at this point, but I just thought, you know, I might as well play around with it while he's addressing that. And, you know, and it's, a, it's, an easy, it's an easy process. As yeah. long as there's not it tension on it, yeah, it, it will awesome. move around smoothly for Very you. Very nice, yeah, I agree. Now you'll notice on this shoe how they've got the vent right here all the time. Uh, CD has the ability that you can move this little screw right here and it'll give you a vent or it'll keep you warmer so this time of year for me I've got this closed because still real early in the season and here it's still a little chilly outside it's surprisingly nice today but <laughs> uh, waiting for more snow I'm yeah, sure that right. it will we'll have two feet of snow on the ground in April yeah I think you're right <laughs> We'll all be on the trainers in April and going, what the heck just happened? Yeah, we did a four-hour mountain bike ride on Saturday. Serious? On completely dry trails. No way. Foothills, but yeah. not even avoiding puddles. Wow. Well, there you go. So what I've done is I've matched up from the landmarks to, to make it match up to the position on the specialized shoe. I also set him up with a wide stance. Uh, that's what we'll start with because that's what we had there. And then we'll see how much different the shoe is once you get on the bike. And I know a lot of people, they tell me when they get new cleats, they just center them right. laterally and fore and aft. And you may get lucky right. and, and have that work out for you. Um, but it's, it's much better to really optimize Right. Your setup. 
I have to tell you, I'm pretty excited about this shoe. It is a good looking shoe. Super light. I don't know a lot about the heel cup on it yet. I know it's got adjustability in it, but I love the way it fits right on the back of your heel. It really feels yeah, great. Yeah, it has a deep pocket to it. Yeah, it does. And it provides a lot of stability when you're really working with heavy force. Yeah. Uh, and then the retention system, you can, you can have it pull into the top of your heel uh -huh. a little bit more. So there's these little tiny screws right. where you can add or subtract awesome. uh, the amount of pull that it gives. So it's, a, it's, it's one of the best shoes out there. Um, CD for years has done phenomenal, phenomenal Actually, shoes. Actually, my very first shoe I ever started cycling in was a CD. So wore those suckers out actually. <laughs> All right, so Bart mentioned that we did a lot of stuff inside the shoe mm -hmm. uh, to help support forefoot yep. varus, to help support what your arch needs. Uh, we're going to start out by... Start out, okay. Just starting So put out. them on right now? Yep, throw them on and okay. we're gonna get you on the bike and start pedaling. So I'm just gonna have you pedal for a minute and since you did ride already today, you may have it fresh in your mind how your feet felt yeah. in your old shoes. Right. And so you can kind of think, oh wow, this immediately this feels crazy different or wow, that's not all that different. So I like, I want you to pedal here for a minute and just kind of consider how different it feels. The float feels way different. I'm so you can the feel the- My left foot I can, my okay. right I can't. And so that's a sign for me that I'm going to need to look at, at uh, the lateral alignment of the cleat. Get a little aggressive on tightening that one up. I'm in Dave's presence, so that means good posture. <laughs> and I'm not always good at that. <laughs> I actually don't mind that flow a little bit, though. It's kind of fun to be able to play around yeah, with where I want my foot. And have, have it to be where it feels good to you. Yeah. Like for example, if I, I need a cleat that's probably not more than five degrees, uh -huh. and when I use speed play, I narrowed that float down a lot. Uh, if I have a lot of float, when I start to push down under harder efforts, it makes my knee really, really sore. Wow. And for whatever reason, it does not like having a lot of space for float and but when I, as soon as I tighten it down you're golden I, I don't change anything else but the amount of float and it it's fine but again that's a very unique individual piece of of this whole puzzle so as you're pedaling here what differences do you notice you mentioned that you're kind of feeling the float on the left side but not the right uh, one of the big considerations is we want to think about what the pressure feels like across the forefoot. Right. So specifically between inside ball of the foot and outside ball of the foot. And if it feels flat, uh, if you feel more pressure at the inside ball of the foot, if you feel more pressure at the outside, or if you have pressure at the outside edge of your foot. Okay. And so those will be considerations as we start to optimize. So right now, on both feet, very outside, I feel the most pressure. You're feeling it on the edge or? So exactly right there. On the, on the, on right the edge. toe edge. Yep. So, on the toe edge on the side. So that's not surprising because we have gone to a more snug fit. Right. And so what we'll want to think about is if that is feeling a, a piece of equipment that gives you a more direct tie-in. Right. Or if it's um, something that your foot is always going to be putting pressure against. Right. And then we need to account for that. And, and part of that is stance width. So we set you up with a wide stance width because that's what right. we had. But that, as I mentioned, that positioning of the drilling, uh -huh. maybe theirs is just a little bit different. Or it could just be that the shoe is a snugger fit for you. And so we'll, as, as you're pedaling here, we'll want to think about that. And, and what do you think about the pressure across the forefoot? Seems pretty even overall. Feels actually. pretty flat. Yeah. 
So again, another thing that we're going to look at closely since we've changed a, a key piece of equipment is we're going to want to take a look at knee alignment and making sure that the knee is running as straight up and down as possible because we don't want any uh, lateral movement at the knee. Again, it's one of those where at best case, we're just being inefficient. But worst case, we could be impinging the joint, and that is something we don't want to do. So a handy little tool here is our laser level, and we're going to run a line kind of at the center point of Bart's foot, and then I'm looking up at where the tibial tuberosity tracks, that bony process on your tibia that's just below the patella and we're getting really good knee alignment on the left leg. I'm not seeing much uh, lateral movement at all. I'm going to look at the right side and another thing that, I'm, that I need to consider when I'm placing cleats is how your foot naturally wants to turn. Right. Your left foot likes to just be straight back. Your right foot likes to go a little bit heel in. Yeah. And you may notice that or you may not, uh -huh. just naturally, but that's, that's kind of how your foot wants to sit. But it's not necessarily affecting your knee alignment. Uh, again, we've got really good tracking at the knee. So what are you noticing with that outside edge of the foot? I'm pretty much going away. I mean, I don't even feel it. You know, yeah. if I don't think about it, I don't so, feel so it. So that's going to be kind of a, a little thing that we want to always Pay have on our to. mind for the first little while. Uh, the shoe is really filled in the uh, arch. It's got a little more arch to it than the older shoe does or the insert or whatever. Okay. But it doesn't feel like it's a bad thing. Yep. It just feels, I mean, I want my foot. So when your foot's placed in it right, it feels just right in the right spot. But if you got your foot off, I could tell you, you would really feel that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, if, a, and if we had you in a more narrow stance, right. you would probably, since you identified that as one of the first things, uh -huh. if we had you in a narrow stance, if you went out for a two hour ride, you'd start to feel a ton of pressure here, almost to the point of, wow, I need to either get the shoes off or loosen the tension. Right. And so we, it's a key factor to optimize that lateral position because the way the equipment works best is when it is snug on your foot. Right. So we don't want to compromise uh, our power production right. to be comfortable. We want to right. figure out the right spot for all this stuff so that when you get out on the road and need to put power down, it, you're not compromising because of a, a, a setup issue. So lots of floating is going to be interesting to get used to too. Yeah, and, and like I mentioned before, it may be something that after a few days of riding, Say, Screw it. you Nobody don't even is. notice. Right, yeah. Uh, or it may start to drive you crazy. Right. And you know, it, it could cause some alignment issues just because your foot can move out. Right. Uh, but watching you pedal, your feet are staying in the same alignment left and right through the pedal stroke. And so it's probably something that I, I don't anticipate it to be a problem. Right. Just based on how I'm seeing your feet push through the pedal stroke. The one thing I do want to look at is just to make sure we've got, we haven't impacted the leg extension highly. So figuring out if the CD has a higher or a lower stack height than the specialized. Um, so I'm going to have you pedal. And when I have you stop, it'll be down on my side. And I want you to try and just stop your foot where it would be naturally through the pedal stroke, I'll support it, mm -hmm. but don't let your knee drop back or your heel drop. We're trying to like see an exact snapshot here. So go ahead and stop down. Perfect. I'm just going to place it straight. 
straight down. And then we're going to measure off of the top of the femur, center of the knee, and focus down to the outside bump of the ankle. And we're essentially right where I expected you to be. So I think that the CD shoe is not that much of a difference. And at least how we've got it placed for your foot, it looks really good. Let's have you do the same thing on the left side. Since we are not symmetrical left to right, we always want to make sure that things are in alignment. Go ahead and stop down. pretty even. So, uh, you know, spending 10 or 15 minutes pedaling, we can get a good idea of what might be way off. Right. Uh, but it may take multiple days and a lot of hours right. before you really identify some of the big issues. Right, sure. And so that'll be something where, you know, we already know that you notice this mm -hmm. right away. Right. So that'll be a question for me when we follow up, right. like, hey, outside edge of the foot, what's it doing? Right. And then I'm going to want to know, again, what the pressure across the forefoot feels like, uh, the entire length of the foot engagement, because there's a lot of things that, that we can help support to have you feel that proprioceptive right. locked onto the pedal. So just so most of you know out there, um, my son Kobe also got a fit done last year with Dave. And being young, he, uh, he didn't know how to answer all the questions that Dave uh, was asking. So Dave was really smart in the fact that he took the shoe, he took pictures of the shoe before Kobe ever left with the measurements. And then when Kobe would call him, he didn't have to be right here. Kobe could adjust, retake pictures, and then Dave could do that. So I think that's one thing that if you're going to set up a shoe, it never hurts to document what you're doing so that you've kind of got a, a go back to or I don't know some things to look at especially if you call an expert like Dave that he could say okay send me your photos let me look at a few things and he may have some ideas of what he can do to help so I just bring that up because we kind of went through this process yeah. a little bit with Kobe you know, and there was several times he called and say well what about this and then Dave would say okay I sent you home with this try this really quick and uh, so he already uh, he kind of knew one of the, some of the problems that we might run into and was able to address those and then uh, got Kobe to where his feet were just absolutely dialed in and ready to go. So uh, I just throw that out there because we kind of went through it the one time, really smart on Dave's end, take some pictures on your end, once again, wouldn't hurt to do the same thing. Uh, take some pictures of your old shoes. So that way, if you do get rid of the old shoes or you lose them, at least you've got that documentation to, to transition with. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier when, when we need to either say you take your bike into the shop right? and, you know, most of the time they're going to be careful and right. make sure your seat post, if they do move it, that right. they've marked it. Exactly. But the off chance that, that, it, that it doesn't come back to you the same as it was, right. we've got we've got the documentation to go back. And or you're like me, you're fly, and all of a sudden you get your bikes lost. Yeah. Or your shoes get lost in luggage somewhere. Yeah. I mean, you gotta buy a new pair of shoes on a trip. Rent a bike yeah, or whatever. Five seconds, I can call Dave and say, hey, you know, what's, what do we need? And he can send me photos, he can send me that kind of stuff. Anyway, anyway, take that for what it's worth. I just think it's a good practice. So, I just thought I'd throw that out there. So I think uh, what, what my suggestion now is since you're not feeling like any isolated points of pressure other than you notice the outside edge, uh, I want you to spend some time riding okay. without making adjustments. Right. Uh, it's good to, you know, in your training log, make notes. Okay. And because something that seems weird or different right now, right. three weeks from now, you may not even remember what it was. You'd totally. be like, I know that there was something, yeah. but you, you can't remember what it was. Right. And that's a good thing because yeah. the body's going to adapt to new setup. Right. Yeah. 
uh, what we don't want is pain. Right. And so with shoe setup, some of the pain that we can find is uh, if we're if if the foot's putting too much pressure on that outside edge, you're going to get aggravation on that little toe. Right. Uh, the other thing we want to pay attention to is if if we haven't supported the forefoot properly, you may get a hot spot underneath the ball of the foot. Right. And I think that everybody knows what that feels like. Right. And a lot of times people tell me, oh, it's just the normal normal pains of cycling. And I, I well, why don't you tell me specifically? Right. They're like, yeah, my feet go numb after a half hour and I just deal with it. And I'm yeah. like, oh, no. Yeah. We, we don't want that because there are ways to help support the foot absolutely so that it can move properly and and not have aggravation agreed so there's a quick segment on how to work on some road shoes and uh, how to transition from one pair of shoes to the next obviously Dave's there uh, to be able to talk to you and coach you and whatever else um, most of you know, I, I mean, I shot a video here in Park City while I was here. Um, you know, Dave sends me my files. He does everything. We do everything remotely. I, once in a while, I'm able to come and actually spend time one-on-one -on -one with him and get dialed in. And he does that for several of my buddies that he coaches and, uh, and other people. So don't hesitate just because you live in New York or wherever it is to call him and work with him because he does at long distance a lot for a lot of people and really helps them a lot. So go check out Plan 7 Coaching. They have a really amazing nutrition program that they dial in with their uh, rides and all that kind of stuff. Right now, you can't tell, I'm a little, uh, a little fat from the winter. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a great, just a great program. So thanks Dave for taking the time today and explaining this for everybody out there on the blog. I'm sure they'll have questions. If you do, make sure you comment, ask questions. Dave checks those. And if he's not checking them, I usually reach out and say, hey, what's going on? What should we do with this? And try to get your questions answered. Um, but uh, we do want to help you. So uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Get out there, ride your bike, and keep cycling strong.